Timid Australian wildlife at its best. Hi guys, it's Mike here from KS Bushcraft Down Under. We've had a, a viewer request about fitting the Evinua titanium burner into the Trangia stoves. So those that aren't familiar, Evinua make a line of uh, titanium pots and a, a multi-fuel uh, stove kit, such as the Mog Pup 500. So this is a multi-fuel stove. It will run a solid fuel, wood, and of course the meth burner. This kit weighs in at about 170 grams, and the burner itself is about 35 grams. The Trangia burner as a complete unit is 106, but if you drop off the, the simmer ring and the sealing ring, it comes down to 64 grams, so 30 grams heavier, apples for apples. So, my 27 series stove is an older model, so you can tell that this has got the riveted on strap loop. So in the bag with the strap, the titanium fry pan, multi-disc lid, this weighs in at 989 grams. So if I was to uh, strip this down to a basically one pot. Now these are stainless steel pots they came out in the late 80s. They're not dual cell, they're straight stainless steel. I can get this kit down to about 570 grams. So a significant saving there. This one doesn't have a locking top, so it's an older model. So if I if I ditch that for that. Now the short answer is on the Avenue burner is it doesn't fit. It sort of sits there scared but that's not acceptable. Okay. So these burners are pretty close with each other. The Avenue design is a bit different from the Transia side by side. So the um, the Trangia at this lip here is 75 millimeters. At the base, it's uh, 70 mil. The Avenue is 71.2 mil at this lip here, and about 67 down here. Now the, the hole in the base of the stove is 70.8 mil, so that's why it sort of sits there looking scared until you put the lean edge in, just like putting a tire on a rim, it pops through. So. You cannot do it that way. It is just not safe. So what I did, I got some aluminium flashing, which you can cut with a good set of scissors if you have to. And I used a hole saw, about 67 millimeters or uh, two and five eighths inches, to make the hole. So that's it there. Now there is a bit of wiggle room. Now you want some wiggle room because this will expand as it gets off. And that there. That makes a rock solid uh, job of it all. So later on I'm going to test to see if which of these two burners is quicker or faster. But for the moment is yes you can do it. Now click stand make a, a base for the uh, the Trangia. I don't have one. And they make an adapter for the Avenue burner and it's a bent piece of wire. So that could be doable. Yeah? But what I've made here is is a solid piece of kit. Well, is it really worth doing it? At the moment, the prices of this stuff seems to be through the roof. I don't know whether it's Christmas or what. But some of these burners are selling for about a hundred Australian dollars, and some of the stove kits for a lot more than that. But if you want to do it, you can do it. Probably, if you were that weight conscious, that thirty grams makes a big difference. I'd spend an extra hundred bucks on a better quality sleeping bag. Anyway guys, if that helps you out, feel free to subscribe, it helps me out greatly, and we'll catch you next time. Okay guys, I thought I'd do a quick uh, boil test. 
So I've got a, an ounce of uh, meths in the burner. Light the burner. I've got 500 mils of water out of my fridge at 5 degrees Celsius. Start the time over rolling. Air temperature in the patio is 28 degrees Celsius. So we'll do this and we'll do a boil with the standard transient burner and we'll see if there's any noticeable difference in speed. I won't put a lid on either of them, just a straight open pot test. Anyway, guys, I'll cut back to you when I get a boil. Well guys, we're getting close, we're at just under 8 minutes, we've got bubbles forming in the pot, you can feel the heat coming up around it. Now there's absolutely no wind at the moment, which is really unusual where I live. So these transients do like a bit of airflow. So the, uh, those that aren't aware, the holes in the front are supposed to be angled into any breeze so to give them a lift. But the heavy burn is certainly throwing out a lot of heat. Now these stainless steel pots were discontinued because they weren't the world's greatest for heat transfer. The aluminium or the later Duracells were better, but they're also incredibly tough pots, which is why I've kept them all these years. Well guys, there's a roll and boil, 11 and a half minutes we'll call it, it's been going for a while now. So I'll have a look to see what type of fuel is left. And we're just, yeah, there's a bit left. I'll just leave the camera roll and see how long the, uh, the fuel lasts. So guys, exactly the same parameters as before, 500 mils of water out of the fridge, air temperature is the same, get our timer rolling, now this, this dead still air we've got it today which is really unusual, I'm pretty sure it's slowing this down. So I'll cut back to you when we get some action. So guys, we've got a rolling boil at uh, just under nine minutes. I missed it on the camera. And as I was saying, the uh, the wind it's very very slight. You can actually hear this transient burner accelerating, just that little bit of air movement. So I might have to repeat the test. So quicker. We'll see how long the fuel lasts. We'll have a look inside. And there's a little bit of liquid fuel. So from experience, one ounce of fuel on a transient you know, burns uh, five, boils 500 mil. And I would have pegged the, the Avenue burner to be more powerful, guys. I really would have. But not conclusive. But it's hardly any breeze, it's not enough to 
even register. Nothing compared to being outside. So, with the windshield off, you can see the breeze that's come up during the second test, blowing the flame around. And I put that down the quicker boil time. So the transient burn is still going at 11 minutes. Exactly the same fuel load as the Avenue burner. I'll call it at 13 minutes, that's done.